Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me here uh, today. I'm Sharon Report. I'm with the Corporation for Supportive Housing. Uh, CSH is a national nonprofit um, uh, and community development financial institution working to end homelessness. We offer loans and grants, technical systems, um, systems change, and research around models of housing and services for highly vulnerable populations, including veterans. CSH was a co-sponsor of Assembly Bill um, 639, and we did work on passing Proposition 41. First, I'd like to congratulate the legislature and governor for passing this uh, really uh, what is a landmark legislation for creating rental housing um, projects for veterans and their families. And I'd also like to thank the, the three state departments for putting together thoughtful guidelines and for welcoming stakeholder feedback. And I think they have listened uh, very thoughtfully to that stakeholder feedback. We support the guidelines as a whole. The guidelines prioritize supportive housing, and we do think this initial prioritization of supportive housing makes a lot of sense. Uh, though we do support um, the need for more affordable housing for veterans uh, who are um, just becoming homeless or who are at risk of homelessness, an initial prioritization for supportive housing makes sense given that veterans are more vulnerable to becoming homeless and are far more likely to be chronically homeless than other people who fall into homelessness. The priority is basic to achieving the initial goals of the HHP and reducing or eliminating homelessness among veterans in California. The guidelines also endorse housing first approach, and I know several people have mentioned that. I just wanted to explain a little bit more of what that means. Housing first is, is an evidence-based model that recognizes um, that ending homelessness begins with ho offering homeless veterans a safe, decent place to live before services can be effective. And that place to live should be an independent apartment that has no limit on the length of how long that veteran and their family could live there. Housing First reduces barriers highly vulnerable veterans have in getting healthy, <laughs> while significantly decreasing the risk of a veteran's return to homelessness. This approach aligns VHHP with federal policies recognized in the VA Supportive Housing Program and other veterans uh, U.S. veterans programs, as well as HUD programs. It also aligns with studies that show the effectiveness of permanent housing in reducing returns to homelessness. Housing first, however, is not housing only, and the guidelines balance the need for quality, evidence-based services that work to end a veteran's long-term experience with homelessness. Research shows services offered voluntarily at housing are effective in moving veterans who've experienced long-term homelessness into housing stability. And these services include client-centered case management, which we think is essential for anybody who has experienced long-term homelessness, but particularly for veterans. Um, and again, this is tenant-centered using motivational interviewing and a harm reduction strategy that engages veterans who are otherwise highly distrustful of health care and veteran systems. Care coordination that links veterans to medical, mental health, and evidence-based substance use treatment services, uh, as well as services that may be available to them uh, as veterans. Training on life skills, money management, and basic tenancy for veterans, some of whom have been homeless for decades and working with property managers and tenants to resolve conflicts and avoid eviction. All, these are the core services that um, are shown to reduce returns to homelessness and stabilize veterans in housing. CSH has worked for over a decade to secure a sustainable fund source of, of uh, services funding in housing in California, and unfortunately we have not yet succeeded. So we know that services funding is one barrier to creating more supportive housing units in this state. However, we uh, did prepare in preparation for VHHP, we did convene a work group to identify existing services funding, and uh, the work group identified several funding sources. So at the risk of repeating some of what Ms. Riggs um, offered in her testimony, I'm just gonna explain some of these services um, funding sources. 
In some counties, the VA contracts with local nonprofit service providers to provide case management services to veterans through the HUD BASH program. We're hoping that the VA expands this community-based provider model to all VA medical centers in California. In addition to BASH, the VA funds also the homeless patient-aligned care teams, which provide and coordinate health care veterans may need. Healthcare for homeless veterans, which offers outreach and case management services to chronically homeless um, veterans, and supportive services for veterans' families, or SSVF, which Ms. Riggs mentioned. And that is available, that program is available to veterans with, uh, with um, other than honorable discharge status. SSVF can be used to provide intensive, year-long um, critical time intervention services to veterans. For those who are not eligible for VA health care benefits or don't have access to, v, uh, to SSVF, which is not available in all counties in California, many um, housing providers cobble together operating revenue and philanthropic or private funding to fund services, and I think that's been mentioned here today as well. Additionally, federally qualified or FQHCs, uh, which are neighborhood-based health service providers, often partner with supportive housing providers to um, pay for case management services in supportive housing. Projects for assistance in transitions from homelessness or PATH is a grant that the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration oversees. PATH funds services to people with serious mental illness, including those with co-occurring substance use disorders who are experiencing homelessness or at imminent risk of becoming homeless. You've heard today about Proposition 63 or the Mental Health Services Act. We actually think historically this program has been underused by veterans, but we are seeing an increase in how many veterans are served through the Proposition 63 program. This program funds full service partnerships to residents with serious mental illness, including low staff to client ratios, 24 seven crisis availability, and client centered approaches to recovery. And then finally, some counties, including Los Angeles and San Francisco, are beginning to fund services through their health dollars uh, for homeless people who have um, frequently used county hospital services. And a good number of veterans are being assisted with this program. In addition to these current resources, CSH has been working with our partners, including HCD, to create new health home benefit to fund services for chronically ill Medi-Cal beneficiaries, and we know a good number of veterans, more than people realize, are Medi-Cal beneficiaries. We expect this benefit will fund a significant range of services in support of housing and that it will help VHHP residents become stable. And then uh, we've heard earlier today about the 1115 Medicaid waiver, which we do hope that some counties utilize to provide opportunities for counties to access federal funds to provide services and housing. There was a federal grant that was announced earlier today for states to be able to fund services in housing as well, and we're hoping that California takes advantage of that grant. I'm not suggesting we have adequate funds for services in support of housing, um, but housing providers are able to create quality supportive housing currently using these existing funding sources. They're able to do this in a way that significantly reduces inpatient stays, emergency room visits, incarceration, and ambulance services among veterans and others with significant barriers to housing stability. These projects improve mental health outcomes, substance use, um, treatment uh, services, and quality of life. And over 90% of red, um, residents in supportive housing some of whom have been labeled as incorrigible and in other more restrictive housing programs, stay stably housed after a year. Over 83% stay stably housed after two years. The biggest challenge housing providers face in cobbling together this complex array of funding sources <coughs> are at the fact that these sources each prioritize different populations. Given the restrictions funding sources already impose, we strongly advise against legislation that would prioritize one population of homeless veterans over another, or that would hamstring the ability of housing providers to use this source of funding flexibly to serve veterans with the greatest need. 
Programs with successful outcomes have always implemented a competitive application process and award the best projects serving highly vulnerable populations. With the clarifications around scoring, we believe that the current guidelines do a really good job in awarding funds to quality projects that plan to serve highly vulnerable veterans. The guidelines already require, for example, serving vets through coordinated entry systems that prioritize people with the greatest need, including those most likely to die on the streets, as um, Senator Nielsen talked about in his community. We want to avoid that happening. And so the requirements that um, target people with the most likelihood of dying on the streets is, is a good direction that the guidelines include. We are uh, not in need of legislation to improve a program that is currently not broken. We have been working with the departments to improve scoring for service providers. We agree that there are some issues here. The guidelines award points for lead service providers with clientele made up of, of at least 20% of veterans living in restricted um, units restricted to veterans. We believe this requirement is arbitrary. Some service providers serve hundreds of clients every year, sometimes thousands, while others serve a couple dozen. And so a 20% requirement compares service providers on unequal terms. An example is uh, Skid Row Housing Trust has 2,000 tenants providing services to those tenants. If 3% are living in restricted households, that's 60 veterans that they're serving. Another service provider that serves um, over 20% veterans um, is serving, t uh, if they're serving 50 veterans, they're only serving 10 veterans in uh, living in restricted units. So it's, it's an arbitrary um, percentage. At the same time, veterans receiving services from highly experienced service providers who do not meet the criteria may have achieved more successful outcomes in serving veterans than clients of other less effective service providers who meet this requirement. Finally, since few service providers serve veterans predominantly or exclusively, we um, believe this incentive favors housing providers in specific geographic areas. Although individual veterans experiencing homelessness may have needs similar to non-veterans experiencing homelessness in some regards, we do agree with Ms. Gunn that service providers must understand the unique challenges veterans face and how to address their health, housing, and employment needs. Service providers should understand military experience, trauma, and other areas of particular relevance to veterans not shared by non-veterans. In addition, providers should have an understanding of the range of services and benefits available to veterans. And finally, all lead service providers in support of housing projects should also have experience with the housing first approach in support of housing products, projects. Not only should providers be culturally competent in serving veterans, they should also be culturally competent in serving homeless Californians. We hope the department support training and cultural competency for strong service providers who lack either of these competencies. Um, thank you very much for inviting me here, and I look forward to your questions. Good afternoon, chairs and members senators. Uh, thank you for inviting me today. Uh, my name is Leon Winston. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Housing Director for Swords to Plowshares, um, San Francisco veteran-specific nonprofit. Um, I've been there for 21 years. Swords has been providing services to low-income, um, at-risk, and homeless veterans for over 40 years. Um, myself, I'm a formerly homeless veteran, um, and a former client of that agency. I currently serve on the board of directors of the National Coalition for Homeless Veterans, and I have been appointed to the um, U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs um, Committee on Homeless Veterans. My remarks today are my own, uh, based on my, upon my experience at Swords to Plowshares, and they're not meant to represent any other body. Uh, SWORDS provides um, services to approximately 3,000 duplicated low-income, homeless, at-risk veterans in the San Francisco Bay Area each year, um, including housing, employment and training services, access to benefits, mental health, case management, assessment, and referral. We opened our first uh, veteran-specific permanent supportive housing site, the first one in the country in 2000. Um, that's 108 units. 
And we currently operate seven sites with 351 permanent supportive units and 102 transitional supportive units with 100 additional units in, now in development, in pre-development. We at SWORDS and through our role as members of the California Associate Association of Veteran Service Agencies have been following implementation of the VHHP program closely. We were involved in the process leading up to Prop 41 reaching the ballot and are participating in the current VHHP 2016 stakeholder advisory meeting as hosted by the Institute for Population Health Improvement at UC Davis. Um, I should note that uh, Sword Supply Shares has not yet applied for VHHP funding, though we plan to do so this year. My perspective today is that of a veteran specific service provider and co developer of nonprofit housing, wherein we target wherein we target homeless veterans with high vulnerability and accompanying needs, often referred to as the chronically homeless. Um, as has been mentioned by uh, other panelists here, the very real challenge that we see is in the creation of this housing is on the services side, particularly so for the large numbers of very high needs homeless veterans that we see in urban settings. In urban settings such as San Francisco, we continue to find it necessary to create housing projects where significant numbers of high need, chronically homeless veterans can be offered permanent housing. They are not adequately served by the HUD BASH Housing Choice Voucher Program as they simply cannot compete in our regular rental markets with the housing subsidy looking for an apartment. We must create housing opportunities for them. VHHP and the creation of dedicated housing is a vital tool in addressing this problem. I just like to say it is our, our niche that we have taken on as serving the, the very high needs veterans in San Francisco very much like um, Skid Row Housing does in Los Angeles for larger populations. Um, and the numbers are uh, really too significant, of course, to make any real headway in, in addressing the chronic homeless population, the highly vulnerable population who are dying on our streets. Um, if only a relatively small percentage of the units are dedicated to that population. We support the creation of mixed population projects, incorporating some number of units for chronically homeless, and, and we do, but, but we do not see that, that sufficient numbers of dedicated units will come online in places like San Francisco and Oakland, California, um, to make a significant dent in the chronic population unless we dedicate large numbers of units specifically for them. At SWORDS, over 95% of our existing permanent supportive housing sites are dedicated to the subpopulation, having as many as 135 such units in any one building. While necessary and benefiting from economies of scale, providing housing and adequate services to large numbers of high needs veterans in one setting is a very considerable challenge. Many of those targeted for these settings are homeless veterans that do not do well in transitional housing or treatment-based programs. They are often treatment resistance and housing first strategies coupled with focus on harm reduction, motivational interview, interviewing, and trauma-informed care, as has been previously mentioned, um, must be employed if these men and women are to achieve and maintain residential stability. Our view is that services in a veteran-specific program need also be culturally competent, as has been mentioned, as uh, Teresa uh, eloquently pointed out, to meet the unique experiences of those, that, that, uh, of those we serve that often underlie their other presenting issues. For us, it is finding dedicated funding for these robust services that is often problematic. On-site supports, including a front desk, are needed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our model is very successful and incorporates multidisciplinary teams of professionals and paraprofessionals providing direct services on-site. Robust services staffing is required if we were to maintain safe housing that affords veterans the opportunity to heal and readjust not only from military experience, but often in but often more acutely from years of homelessness and isolation, including very significant mental health, behavioral health, and physical maladies. Our typical veteran is polydiagnosed, age between 45 and 70, and with serious age-related illnesses appearing 15, 10 to 15 years earlier than is expected in normal populations. Very few live past 70. Once a property is stabilized, the majority of our vacancies over time are due to the end-of-life transition. Our goal is to create housing where all of these veterans can, can age in place. Now, that said, not every veteran, especially with in severe mental illness, can live in these congregate settings. They're just too triggering for them. So there, there have to be other options for them as well. When project-based, the HUD-VASH program provides much-needed rental subsidies for VHHP projects, allowing projects to pencil out from an operations perspective, also providing the, the availability of VA services. 
However, the VA services component of the HUD-VASH program was not envisioned for this type of setting. And reliance upon VA staff coverage at these sites can be a challenge, although they are trying to do their best. If those services are provided on site, which we see as mandatory in these settings, VA services are only available during normal business hours, leaving a significant staffing burden um, on the provider. And I'd also like to say, Sharon mentioned the support service of veteran family program. We are the lead provider in, in San Francisco and Alameda counties of that program. It is a very short term um, homeless prevention and, and rapid rehousing program. It does not provide ongoing services and permanent supportive housing. Um, I think the legislation would allow it to, as it was written, but the rules as prolongated by the federal agencies did not allow it to. Um, so when we take on one of these projects, we understand that our veteran tenants are our responsibilities 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and adequate staffing is paramount. Crises often occur during other than normal business hours. We are very happy that a minimum of 10% of the, of the supportive units capitalized through the HHP must, must go to non-VASH eligible veterans, even though the supportive services burden assumed by the operator is that much higher as a result. So from our perspective, adequate dedicated funding for service provision in these settings over and above those offered by the VA is the main hurdle. This is also the opinion of many of our experienced colleagues in California and nationwide. Willingness by, by the VA to contract out services for these projects would be welcome and help address the gap, but there has been significant resistance to doing so by many VA medical centers that operate with a great deal of autonomy. Often the burden falls to local governments, but the availability of local government support is patchy at best non-existent in many places. We do not suggest changes um, in the VHHP um, legislation that would allow um, allocation for meeting support services uh, needs of the projects in any significant way. Our view is that California needs to create as much housing inventory as possible from its funding source. VHHP capitalized reserves for operations or services in that case may improve the viability of given projects but will directly result in fewer units being created. Therefore, we urge lawmakers to find other ded ded dedicated sources for services funding for these high needs projects, possibly through the direction to the state Medicaid program, taking advantage of the expansion of support made possible by the Affordable Care Act, as Ms. Riggs and others have mentioned. In my role nationally, I can report that informal dialogue has taken place regarding the possibility of the HUD-VASH program working in coordination with VHHP in California as a pilot program, given the California taxpayers' largesse in providing this capital, and our nation continuing to have the highest housing need for homeless veterans. We would encourage the state to formally foster that dialogue with HUD and the VA, as a willingness to look at doing so has been stated informally by, by these federal partners. With another 8,000 HUD-VASH vouchers surviving the 2016 federal budget negotiation, and I'll say that you put funding for services for the VA side of that. We're not in the budget. So HUD has authorized. The budget does contain 8,000 additional HUD VASH vouchers for 2016. The VA has not, was not provided services funding on that side of it. So it's an opportunity to do something creative with our federal partners. Um, California should receive its fair share of that allocation. And the flexibility in the program is needed for those subsidies and services to leverage and take advantage of VHHP capital funding. Help me in our common goal of ending veteran homelessness here. At the end of the day, the VHHP program will leverage a significant amount of housing inventory across the state dedicated to housing and supportive needs of, of at-risk, low-income, and formerly homeless veterans. The program will create desperately needed housing infrastructure that will not only help address today's homeless veteran crisis in California, but also to create a dedicated housing inventory that will remain in service for tomorrow's veterans. It is crucial that we get it right, and we, the departments have done a great job thus far, um, and your attention to this program is greatly appreciated. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Beal and other distinguished members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Donitza Bogachevic. I'm the Acting Network Homeless Coordinator for the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs Network 21. I'm responsible for the coordination and oversight of all VA homeless programs in the four VA healthcare systems in Northern California, as well as three others in Nevada and the Pacific Islands. 
I'm also a participant in the VHHP Stakeholders Advisory Group, as is my counterpart in VA Network 22, which includes the, the four VA healthcare systems in Southern California. It's my pleasure to be here today to provide a brief overview of VA homeless programs in California and to share some information about homeless veterans. 50% of homeless veterans are 51 years old or older. They have substantial health problems and report high rates of non-fatal suicidal behavior. A recent study showed that these homeless veterans were approximately two and a half years younger at the time of death and twice as likely to attempt suicide than their non-homeless veteran counterparts of the same age. Across all age groups, homeless veterans have significant psychosocial factors that should be known and understood by service providers who aim to work with this population. Research shows that 51% of individual homeless veterans have disabilities, 50% have serious mental illness, and 70% have substance abuse problems. Many homeless veterans have comorbid conditions, meaning a combination of two or more of these conditions. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs homeless programs were initiated by public law in 1987, and since then, the VA homeless programs have grown exponentially to include a full spectrum of services, all with the aim of permanently housing our homeless veterans. These programs include homeless prevention and rapid rehousing, emergency housing, trans res residential treatment, transitional housing, and permanent supportive housing. Our permanent supportive housing program, HUD-VASH, now includes multidisciplinary staff such as social workers, nurses, occupational therapists, peer support specialists, and housing search specialists. These HUD-VASH teams work with veterans using a housing first model to assist them with their transition from being homeless to becoming housed and continue to work th with them while housed using harm reduction and motivational interviewing techniques to maintain their stability in housing. Our homeless programs also include specialized employment, dental, and healthcare programs for homeless veterans. We provide outreach in the jails and the prisons, on the streets, in shelters, and we provide support to veterans treatment courts and other specialty courts with specialized staff dedicated to those projects. Additionally, we partner with our local, local homeless continuums of care, public housing authorities, veteran service organizations, and countless other federal, state, and local partners to address the needs of homeless veterans and those at risk of homelessness. Within the state of California, federal VA homeless programs provide funding for 729 emergency housing or shelter beds across 47 programs with our community partners through our Healthcare for Homeless Veterans or HHV contracts. We provide per diem payments for 2,720 transitional housing beds across 96 grants in our grant and per diem program. Through our Supportive Services for Veteran Family or SSVF, VA awards grants to nonprofit organizations to provide prevention and rapid rehousing services to veteran households. Many of our SSVF grantees in California have been awarded renewals of their grants annually since its inception in 2011. For services to be provided in this current fiscal year 2016, we have 29 organizations in California that were awarded over $35.7 million in SSVF grants. This is in addition to the 26 grants that were awarded in fiscal year 15 to priority communities for surge funding, totaling over $98 million for services to be provided over the course of three years in California. Our largest housing program by far is our HUD-VASH program, a partnership between VA and HUD, which includes a rental subsidy for permanent housing through HUD and the local public housing authority, and case management through the VA or through our contracted VA partners. There are over 78,000 HUD-VASH vouchers nationwide at present time, this does not include the 8,000 that is currently being discussed in the FY16 budget. So with the 78,000 HUD-VASH nationwide, we have approximately 14% of those here in California, with approximately 11,000 active HUD-VASH vouchers today in California. In addition to the resources and services we provide, VA has been actively participating in many federal initiatives to end veteran homelessness by the end of 2015. We participate in the Mayor's Challenge, which in California has 32 mayors and boards of supervisors signed up with. We have five cities in California that are part of the initiative known as 25 Cities. And we participate in Zero 2016, which is uh, aimed at ending veteran and chronic homelessness with nine California communities. Despite all the resources we have and all the efforts made by our veterans, our VA homeless programs, and our many partners, we have at least two significant challenges that we face in California that should be highlighted. The sheer number of homeless veterans, and the shortage of affordable housing. According to HUD's 2015 homeless point in time count, there were over 47,000 homeless veterans nationwide with over 11,000 of these in California. That means we have nearly 24% of all homeless veterans in our state alone, even though our overall veteran population in California is 8% of the nation's veteran population. The three states with the next highest number of homeless veterans, Florida, New York, and Texas, 
did not even have as many homeless veterans combined than we have here in California alone. We clearly have a disproportionate number of homeless veterans, and which leads to discussion on the second challenge, the housing in California. As you know, there have been numerous news reports and studies showing that many parts of California have been experiencing several years of extremely high rent increases, low vacancy rates, and general lack of affordable housing, especially for middle-income and low-income residents. Even with a hud vash voucher, which provides, among other things, a Section 8 subsidy from HUD and the Public Housing Authority, it is extremely challenging to house our veterans due to challenging housing markets. In some cities, the rent increases have gone up so dramatically that they have outpaced increases in HUD's payment standards, and the voucher subsidy is just not high enough to meet market rate costs. For example, in San Francisco, the Housing Authority's regular payment standard for a one-bedroom apartment is $1,995 a month, though the median rent for a one-bedroom is over $3,500. Though many of our housing authorities have received special per permission from HUD to increase their payment standards, even those increased rates do not always allow our veterans to find viable options in an extremely competitive rental market in many California cities. Additionally, many communities have extremely low vacancy rates in their rental markets, lower than 5%, and I've heard even lower than 1% or 2% in some communities, such as Santa Rosa, Santa Clara, San Diego, and other areas. Finally, there are still some landlords who will not rent their properties to those on a Section 8 voucher, even if it's a veteran. So this further challenges uh, and limits our available housing options. One way which, which, and one way which our housing, uh, high housing costs in California has had an impact on our ability to end veteran homelessness might be reflected in our data on utilization of these HUD-VASH vouchers. As of this week, over 84% of all HUD-VASH vouchers nationwide were leased up, meaning the veteran has the voucher, a lease is in place, and they are housed, with some regions experiencing rates close to or more than 90% leased up. In California, that current leased up rate is approximately 75%. In fiscal year 15, the national average for time from when a veteran received their voucher from the housing authority to when they were leased up was 59 days, while in California, the average was 72 days, with some regions averaging 84 days or more. On November 30th, we had over 2,000 veterans in California with a voucher in hand who were actively searching for housing. For these and many other reasons, the VA homeless programs in California have been extremely interested in the VHHP program. The VA has provided letters of support for a number of VHHP applicants in round one and round two, including many that were already awarded in round one. Some of those applicants have requested to partner directly with the VA and our public housing authorities to use HUD-VASH vouchers in their projects, and some of these may not be planning to use HUD-VASH vouchers, but are looking to VA to partner on referrals and access to VA services for their residents. Not all homeless or at-risk residents, veterans qualify for HUD-VASH, so even if we had enough housing to utilize all of our HUD-VASH vouchers, we would still have thousands of California veteran households in need of affordable housing. Many of these veterans would also benefit from supportive services that will assist them in their housing stability. And since VA is restricted by legislation on what type of veterans we may serve, as you know, all, not all veterans qualify for VA health care, which is typically what um, VA uh, HUD-VASH programs and most of our homeless programs, and again, uh, even with SSVF and our grant and per diem programs that has somewhat lesser restrictions on who they can serve, the, uh, the more broad uh, appeal of VHHP is that it, it doesn't have those same restrictions. And so uh, creating more affordable housing, I think, is uh, more broad with the VHHP program. So the VHHP's goals to house veterans at all income levels and to provide supportive services demonstrates both foresight and knowledge about the needs of this population. Those of us who work within VA homeless programs in California are eager to see the development of additional affordable housing for veterans in California. We stand ready to provide what information we can that will assist you in your implementation of the VHHP program. And in those projects that are awarded that we are supporting, we are ready to work with them. So thank you for your time today. Thank you, panelists. Um, and um, I, I want to just check, do a check over here. How many people in the uh, public would like to address the committee? How about show of hands? So why don't we hear you people now, and then we'll open it up to questions. Is that okay? So we can just hear the public. Uh, two minutes each, please. <clears throat> 